Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to cover what I'm actually doing to meet my goals for 2023. But first, I need to tell you what my goals really are. So I'm not really proud of where I've gone as far as body weight. I mentioned that in the first video for this series. Uh, since 2020, basically, my body weight has just steadily gone up because there was no competitions that were really going on. And even when I started competing in 2021, um, I was just signing up for shows as a 220 or signing up for shows in late 2021 as a, I'm sorry, in 2022 as a 198 uh, and then just going up to the next weight class when I didn't meet weight. So I want to get back down to competing at the 198s. And for me, I really, I just don't enjoy cutting. I'm not very good at it. Uh, usually I can only afford to swing eight pounds or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm setting a body weight goal of 200 pounds even. And I want to be able to not just hit that, but I want to hit that and sustain it. Um, outside of that, uh, I started tracking and running again, and being military, running is just kind of a part of life. There's no getting away from that. And my watch basically estimates my VO2 max based on mile and a half run time. And although I still do pretty well on my annual fitness assessment, uh, doing the shuttle runs and such on the new Air Force fitness assessments, uh, my VO2 max is estimated at a 42 right now. Now, I do suspect that that's going to go up on my first test day for VO2, but uh, I'm not proud of that. That's not good. And also, there's a lot of health concerns I have. So first, I'm going to cover what I'm doing actually in Evolve AI. So I came, um, I've, I've done Juggernaut AI in the past. Uh, most recently, I did Kabuki Virtual Coaching, which was actually really good. I worked with uh, Coach Joe Stella over at Kabuki Strength, and we were able to make a lot of progress on my circus dumbbell, on my deadlift, as far as technique especially, and on my log press, which were a few of the lifts that I was really kind of looking for some help because I have some pretty high expectations for myself as far as on log press and overhead movements in 2023. We'll cover those in a later video. Um, basically, just kind of ran into a situation where I wasn't really able to afford Kabuki virtual coaching. Uh, and so I, I messaged my coach and I was like, hey, this is getting kind of expensive. And uh, I think I'm gonna take a break from Kabuki. And again, if you're working on like a technique type thing, Kabuki virtual coaching is absolutely great. They definitely take care of you and you get the amount of attention that you would expect for $250 a month. It's just something that um, I did for six months, and after six months, I was like, all right, I think I've gotten what I want out of this. I wanna move on to just normal programming. Um, and that's when I started uh, looking for something else, and Evolve AI kept coming up. And funny enough, one of the doctors that I actually use to uh, study and pursue in pursuit of my master's degree in human performance, specifically in strength and conditioning, is Dr. Gooden, who is actually on the Evolve AI uh, staff, if you will. And so it caught my interest. I, I checked it out. And uh, basically for $15 a month, I didn't think that it was something that I could beat. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys my Evolve AI. Um, now on my phone here, I'm 89 days out from my next competition, uh, which is not a competition, rather more of a just, I'm just testing, so April 8th. And that's because on May 13th, I am planning to do Tennessee Strongest Man down in Nashville, Tennessee. A uh, big reason for doing that is just to honestly go and hang out with Jason over at Surplus Strength. Uh, hopefully see Chris Yarber over at Beltfed Strength while I'm down there as well. Um, but it gives me enough time to basically work these strength blocks and then to do a strongman focused kind of block uh, specifically just for competition prep leading into the show. Um, I'm on a hypertrophy phase right now. I'm actually on a deload week right now. And I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what that looks like. Now, there are some things that I have added, and I'm trying to find a day where it has it. But uh, one, one of the things that I just wanted to show, so Juggernaut AI and a lot of your other app-based training programs are 
not really all that good for strongman. And the reason that they're not that good for strongman is because there's really not that many strongman exercises in them. So like if I look up yoke, there is a yoke walk in here and that's good. Um, it usually doesn't hit anybody until you hit a bridge block. Um, now you can specifically select it, but uh, other than that, I think that there's a keg. Yeah, so there's a keg carry and there's a farmer's carry, but basically it's all carry type movements, which are great movements to have. And there's a lot of benefit to training strongman type movements, especially with irregular implements uh, on just general strength and conditioning. But again, in strongman, looking for something a little bit more so. So one of the things that I like um, about the Evolve AI program, and I'm sure there's other programs that do this too, but you can add your own exercises. So for instance, if I wanted to add log clean and press, or let's just add, log push press out of the rack and spell correctly so now what this could be in here is the you can actually design evolve ai to recognize uh, the log push press as just kind of a pressing exercise so what you would do is you would come down here and you would select shoulders uh, there's definitely some chest action to the push press. Triceps for sure. And I'm just going to select those two and you can even select like your weight increment. I'm just going to go for five pound weight increments because I've got two and a half. I have a pair of one and a quarters, but I'm not exactly sure where they are. Uh, but yeah, you can exercise style. It can be reps or timed units it can be pound or kilograms. I'm using freedom units today. And I'm sure I'm missing something here, uh, but basically you can now create this exercise. And now when you have a, let's say a normal push press that comes up in programming, you can put the log push press in there. Um, you can also do like a log clean and press. And uh, basically do the exact same <clears throat> type of thing. Uh, but just remember to include that uh, basically it can be used for uh, the clean portion as well. So like try to think of what's going to be affected with the clean portion. So the, the lats for sure. Um, I'm not going to really include too much as far as the lower body is concerned. Uh, one of the ideas I've had is actually to go and look up the push press and see if it's possible to like see what the push press is, but I... I don't see it so that would be something that I think would be really cool to be able to see inside of the Evolve AI app so if there's a push press and let's say that I want to create a similar movement to a push press can you show me which boxes are checked on the push press because those same boxes for a push press would be on a log clean and press as well but um, other than that, I really like Evolve AI. I've gotten a couple comments uh, where people are saying that the app has crashed on them. I did have one moment where the app kind of fully crashed on me. I did have to completely offload it from my phone and reinstall it. But like Juggernaut, like a lot of the other programs out there, uh, it is a login style program. And so it actually picked up exactly where I was at in my workout. Uh, no data was lost. Uh, it was just, a, I guess, an inconvenience for about 90 seconds um, that it took me to figure out that I needed to uninstall it, reinstall it, and then re-log back in, maybe 120 seconds. So realistically, during one interval. Um, and I think that when I did that, it was because I jumped off of Evolve AI, jumped onto Instagram DMs, <clears throat> And I think I was talking to somebody and I'm sure there was something with that. I did send a screenshot of the error I got to Evolve AI um, just so that they could continue to debug their platform. Um, but other than that, uh, the interface is really nice. So basically when you start training, you get your warm up that you're supposed to do. Um, those of you that have done a juggernaut will definitely recognize this. Uh, you can do your current body weight. I don't actually weigh myself every day. I just weigh myself periodically. So. Right now it's like once a week, Monday mornings or something like that. 
uh, I'm sure I'll start to weigh myself more as I start to see those numbers fall off the scale, which I'm already seeing them fall off the scale. Um, you can rate your sleep, um, all that stuff, and basically that adds to your readiness rating. Now, one of the cool parts about AI-based training is that you then get that readiness score. And that readiness score is really cool because it will modify your program depending on what you're trying to do. Now, I'm not an Evolve AI affiliate. I don't get paid for any of that stuff. Uh, but one of the things I think is really cool about it is that they have a very smart staff, not to say anything negative about any of the other programs. Like I said, I ran Juggernaut. I love juggernaut i think it's a great program uh evolve ai is basically the same program not the same program but the same interface and uh, it's just half the price at 15 dollars. i think that's just probably a beta thing uh, but either way uh definitely huge cost savings now as for my running stuff all right so with my vo2 being 42 and I want to start to improve my VO2, what I've been doing is I've just been using uh, Garmin and Garmin Connect. Now, if we go to my activities and we look here, basically what we can see is it'll give me a seven day look whenever I bring up my phone. And you can see like right now, for instance, I've run 11.6 miles in the past seven days. For those of you that run, that's really not that far. And what I'm doing when I run, and I'll show you guys uh, yesterday morning's run, is basically really slow. Uh, zone two, Garmin has five heart rate zones. So my runs tend to be zone two to three as far as training goes. Um, but basically shooting for like that 145 average heart rate, we can see that I hit 144 yesterday. But if we look at the graph, uh, you can also see that for most of the exercise, which is the block portion of that, I suppose I should hold it this way so you can actually see. We can see uh, my average heart rate was 144. My maximum was 164. And I'll be honest, yesterday I, I did have to kind of cross streets a lot. It was just a busy traffic day. I like to road run. I'm not a big treadmill runner um, just because I think that there's something to getting out, running around. Not that you're seeing other people, but I know I've read stuff in the past about like ocular stuff helping with mental health. Um, I've definitely suffered some from, from some mental health stuff in the past, and so anything I can do, I try to do. But that block right there at heart rate, that is the actual workout that it gave me. And basically what I did is I ran, and then after I finished my run, I just did a walk um, to make sure that I get nice and cooled down and I don't end my walk until I'm actually in zone one. But I have a heart rate monitor that pairs with my Tactic 7 watch and these are really nice wearables and you don't need to have wearables in order to do zone 2 running um, What I will tell you is that I have wearables and I use them uh, But I also do what's called the the talk test while I'm doing my run So I'll be out running and periodically if I start to feel like maybe I'm getting a little bit too high as far as heart rate Or my heart rate monitor is actually telling me that I'm too high as far as heart rate I'll do a little talk test real quick and just I don't know, like say the Pledge of Allegiance, or usually it's um, whatever the lyrics to the music that I'm currently listening to, I'll just kind of say those lyrics. And if I can make it through like one to two lines without having to take a breath, I know that I'm still probably in zone two. Again, there's a lot of those physiological barriers that you have to break in order to really get into zone three. And part of that's gonna be increased oxygen need, which is gonna cause you to have to take more breaths. Um, but it also gives me a whole bunch. So like it gives me my average cadence. Um, that's this really does start to get more important if you take running more seriously. Uh, but one of the things that I've actually really worked on improving was my ground contact time. Uh, I've had some injuries in the past. I've had some very, very bad back injuries. Uh, everybody, I feel like, has had really bad back injuries, but um, the Air Force has tried to do surgery on my lower back before, and I've actually been able to put that off through strength training, but I used to have a really bad con ground contact time. It was like 55 uh, left, 45 right, and I've really worked hard to try to basically even that out. And you can see here that that's actually paid off because yesterday I was pretty much 50-50. Um, but it gives you some stuff to hit. So basically the way this works is my, my watch also tends to kind of go easy on me. So today my recommended workout is to rest. Um, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm trying to hit zone two to three. I'm trying to hit about 180 minutes of zone two, three work uh, per week. 
And so what that means is, you know, 30 to 40 minutes uh, a day uh, for four to five times a week. Um, and if, if you do the math real quick, you'll actually see that, well, that does it actually 180. Yes, 180 is the goal to be able to hit. And it would be like 180 minutes of zone two to three once my conditioning is better, followed by maybe a day where it's a slightly higher intensity, uh, really working on improving either speed or some other thing. But that is it. So again, using Evolve AI, which has been great so far, using Garmin um, in the pre-populated workouts, using my heart rate monitor, my wearables, but also doing all of my uh, physiological tests, so like that talk test that I talked about briefly. A lot of this stuff is me just kind of experimenting on myself. Um, I learn a lot of this stuff through my master's program. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of research. Um, I'm really a big nerd like that. And uh, oftentimes I don't have other people to do these things to. And so uh, to be a, a strong man that also has running goals, I feel is pretty unique. So looking to really improve myself in 2023 get the VO2 max up, get the body weight down, get that strength up, and still chasing that 300 pound overhead. I don't care what implement I do it on, but that's the, that's the big lifetime goal, is a 300 pound overhead on either the log, the axle, barbell. I don't particularly care, just something. But that's been it for this video. Again, so that is how I'm training, uh, what I'm doing. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about what you think about my program. Other than that, I appreciate each and every single one of you that watch. And remember to keep your training better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next time.